Hello and welcome to another Friday feedback session with me Chris Beard of F11 Landscapes. If you're joining us for the first time tonight then thank you so much I hope you enjoy it and if after you've watched through this video if this is something that you'd like to get involved in then jump over to Facebook do a search for F11 Landscapes and request to join our group. We put up regular requests for images to review so when you see one of those requests, upload your image and we will review it on one of our Friday feedback sessions. It does say live. It does say live and I've got a little bit of information for you at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Right, I just want to say before I begin, this is only personal opinion, but all the feedback I give is for one purpose alone and that's to try and help you improve your landscape images. So without further ado, let's make a start. This first image was sent in and the photographer wasn't so much asking for feedback on the image, but they asked me for some help on how to take images of reflections in water. So if we have a look at this image here, we can see there are two areas of concern. If we have a look on the left hand side, we can see this bright area and there's another bigger one on the right hand side there. Now I would suggest that the photographer probably didn't use a polarizing filter when they were making this image. And if you want to take reflections, then a polarizer is essential. For digital cameras, we get a circular polarizing filter and that screws onto the front of our lens. And once we've done that, we can either use our live view screen or look through the viewfinder. And what we do is we actually rotate the front of that polarizing filter. And rotating it actually increases or reduces the polarization effect. And that will reduce those bright areas in the image and allow us to see through the surface down onto the bottom of the riverbed or lake bed. That will help to give a bit more interest to the image. If you haven't got yourself a polarizing filter, it, it is an essential part of the landscape photographer's armory. So maybe have a look around and get yourself one and then go back and try making these images. Right, let's push on to our next one. So we have an image here, a beautiful autumn colour. We obviously have red leaved tree here in the foreground, which is what captured the photographer's eye. We also have the green stubby trees around it. We have the oranges and browns of the grass around the bottom. And we have this dappled sky. How can this image be improved? Well, when we get scenes like this, and they're all too common around autumn time, we see a, a tree that is in a riot of colour, but it's surrounded by other trees which become distracting. So we really need trees like this in isolation. So up against a bland background, we need a fair bit of distance between our main subject and what's in the background so we can use a shallow depth of field to keep our tree sharp and everything else in the background gets slightly softer or we can use mist if we get mist behind our main subject that will then help to make our main subject stand out a lot more so I think this is a fairly typical composition that we all find when we're out trying to look for something. We see this beautiful tree, but it's not quite in the right position for us to make a, a really spectacular image. We just need to keep looking. There is something on this image I'd just like to show you because I think it's really interesting. If we call up our histogram. Now, a histogram is something we have spoken about in the past. We can see that we're actually looking at the luminosity channel. And we can see that the photographer has done really well. We have no blocked up shadows and no burnt out highlights. So everything has been captured 
really well. But that's only in terms of brightness in our image. That's what we're looking at, darks to lights. There's no blacks, burnt, blocked up blacks, and there's no burnt out highlights. However, if we look at the RGB channel, and now we're looking at the colours in the image, we can see that some colours we've lost at one end of our histogram and also there's a spike at the other end. So by looking at the individual colours, it can actually help us to isolate where this problem is. If we look on the red channel, we can see our reds aren't too bad at one end, but at the other end there's a huge spike up here and it tails off against that end there. If we go on to the green channel, we can see a similar result here. And then if we go into the blue channel, even worse. So that's telling us that we have lost details in all those channels. So what tends to happen there is that when we lose detail in those channels, we lose details in those coloured areas in our image. The image isn't sufficient enough resolution for me to zoom in, but you can tell that there are a lot of these leaves, these red leaves, have lost detail. One way to overcome this is when we're processing our images in Lightroom or whatever raw processor we use, pay great attention to the colours and see which colours have blown out and try and bring those back into what we call gamut. And that will help us to keep all detail in both the colours and the brightness of our image. So thank you for sending that one in. That was really good that you did and that we were able to have a chat about that. Let's move on to our next image. This is um, a lovely Lakeland scene. I'm assuming it is up in the Lake District of England somewhere. And if we just take a few seconds just to take in the scene. We have this beautiful still water. We can see the reflections of the boats and these beautiful boats moored on the water. We can see a stand of trees in the centre of our frame. We've got the greens to the left and right. Then in the middle distance we have a hillside and in the far distance we have some snow on the hills in the distance. And then topping it all up, we have this beautiful sky, either a sunrise or a sunset. So there's an awful lot going on in this image, and it is a beautiful image. But my eye tells me that there's something not quite right with it. Let me explain what I mean. We have this lovely sunrise or sunset in the sky. However, the luminosity, the sky, is actually darker than our foreground. And nearly all the time in our photography, our foreground should be darker than our sky. The sky is usually one to two stops brighter than our foreground. So that leads me to assume that maybe that sky has been added. Let's continue looking. I can see little bits where the sky overlook, overlaps this snow-covered mountain in the background. So that's a bit of a giveaway as well. There also isn't as much shadow detail on this back mountain as I would have expected. It seems very flat in contrast and I would have expected at this time of day there to be a lot of contrast in there and it's a lot brighter than I would expect it to be. Then if we come forward, I think the greens on this side and this side look a little bit unnatural. This is winter. You know, the snow tells us it's winter. The lack of leaves on these trees tells us that it's winter. But that green looks a little bit unnatural, almost as if it's been enhanced. And then look at the boats. If we are at sunrise or sunset, we would expect these boats to be a lot darker, but they really are kind of bright white. So either they've been lightened, or this is a composition with the boats taken during the day, 
and an evening sky added. And there is one other thing that leads me to believe there's been some work done on this in post-processing. Have a look at this mast here. We can see at the bottom it's white and then here it turns to dark. So if I just pull a level down here, that mass changes from light to dark. Now that could be the result of a neutral density filter being used. But if we come over to the mast on the right hand side, we can see that this one is still white until we get to that level. So there's two different levels there of darkness on the mast which indicates to me that there has been a fair bit of processing going on and I would also expect, as I said, the foreground to be one to two stops darker than the sky and that would mean there'd be a bit more colour in there too. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what this photographer has actually done. All I would say is that you've got a great idea. I think your execution in Photoshop or whatever processing you used just needs to be refined a bit more but you have the basis of a superb image there and just keep practicing and look at images where we do have this colour in the sky and look at the kind of contrast and detail that we would have in the background and also look at the foreground as well to see that two stop difference in other people's images and then try and incorporate that into your own. But really well done. And, you know, as I said before, it is a really nice image. Let's move on. Here we have another exceptional image. This is taken at Blackpool, and these are the vents. They're supposed to look like, or supposed to mimic razor shells, I think. So this is on the seafront at Blackpool, and the photographer has obviously got some sunlight on them and chosen a, a really moody sky. And I think this is has real impact, this image. It's been turned to black and white, quite obviously. It's been taken from low down, looking up, to make these works of art really stand out. And that's something that I think all of us should do a little bit more. We get so obsessed with taking images from our own eye height. We set our tripod up with our camera at eye height and that's where we take our images from. When if we go down a bit or even get a bit higher, I know some people that take a little set of step ladders out with them to get that bit higher and look down on, an, on a scene. And it gives just a different perspective. So as the photographer's got low here, these vents are really dominant in the frame and overpower us. So absolutely fantastic. I really do like that image. Thank you for sending that one in. And another fantastic image. Th this is beautiful. The photographer's obviously got up early one morning or stayed up late in the evening to get this scene. Obviously high up looking down on this estuary with the ribbons of the river running out to the sea. Really is nice. Um, let me pull my little pen up. So we have in the foreground lots of interest, lots of patterns here and our eyes can spend an awfully long time just wandering around. We have the main channel here going out and round the corner um, we've got the banks here, we even have the distant hills and this beautiful recession as we look back into the distance. Absolutely fantastic. And to top it off we have this lovely sky. Can this image be improved? Well, it's going to be difficult but I think it can. You see when we look at an image what is the main subject? Well our eye is obviously looking around the watercourses and maybe onto these hills here. Does it go back here? Mm, maybe fleetingly, but I think all the main interest in our image 
is in that kind of area there. So why not focus the viewer's eye? And I think if we just crop down ever so slightly from the top, not a long way, so we don't want these clouds to be too close to the edge of our frame. So I think that tends to focus the viewer's eye a lot more down here than it does up here. If we just go back, it's a very minimal change, but I think it's one that just improves it ever so slightly. There's another, there's two other things I'd like to mention here. I think the photographer's cut off this little piece here. And I just wonder if it wouldn't have been possible to include that. I don't like chopping off little bits of our images. And I don't like having bright areas on the edge of our frame. Obviously on sides like this, it's, you know, we can't really do anything about it. But this here, there are two ways we can either go a little bit wider in our focal length to include that or we can take two images we can compose a little bit to the left to include that and then photograph straight ahead as the photographer has done here that would then give us two images that we can stitch together which would allow us to include that little arc there so I think that's a very important point it just shows that we take a little bit more time and a little bit more care over our composition. The second thing I'd like to mention is if we go up to the top of our image, we can see up here quite a few little dust spots. Can you see them? Quite a lot of them over our image. Now these are really easy to remove in Photoshop. Pick up our little tool here and we just rub over them and the content aware feature of Photoshop just removes those for us very very simply. Have to be a bit careful around the cloud. Photoshop doesn't start cloning in little bits of cloud over our sky but that is something that we just need to do. We generally find that these little dust spots occur in the corners of our image or at the very tops of our frame. Yeah, we can clean our sensors. Um, I remember with the older cameras, sensors used to get fairly dirty and there were lots of little devices on the market for cleaning them. Some people used to send them away. I didn't have much of a problem with cleaning my own, but with modern DSLRs now, the dust, the cleaning function of the sensor is really good and we don't seem to get that problem as much as we once did. But as I've just shown you there, so easy to remove those in Photoshop. So thank you very much for sending that image in. That is my type of photograph. I love it. Really well done. Thank you. Just a couple more to go. Here's one obviously taken up at Elgol on the Isle of Skye and you can see the photographer has been really careful with his composition here. We have the tide rushing in down here which is really good and I love the detail the photographer's managed to get as it flows over these rocks here. Lovely. A really moody day, sky is beautiful, really do like that as well. The timing, yes, really good. Couple of things. One, I think this rock here overlaps the coolings in the distance there. And I think if the photographer, as we mentioned earlier, it gets a bit higher. If we'd got a bit, of, a bit more height, then we would have got some separation between this rock and the coolings in the background. Conversely, if the photographer had gone a bit lower, he would have been able to make these more prominent 
in his frame. Our compositions are nearly always a compromise. We have decisions to make and I've spoken about this on some of our on location videos. Photography is all about making decisions and we stand or fall by them or our images stand or fall by them. You know we have two problem areas there, there and here and the photographer has in my mind kind of hedged his bets and gone down the middle. I'd like to see decisions made where one is more prominent than the other. There is something else on this image as well that once my eye sees it it just keeps going back to it. This rock here, look at that face. You've got two eyes, a nose and this big mouth. It's almost comical and I think once you've seen that then your eye just keeps going back to it. And that leads me to the other point. I think with this image here, I think these two rocks are probably, for my taste, a little bit too prominent in the frame. It becomes all about those two rocks there rather than the distant mountains and this beautiful sky and this beautiful sea. This comical rock has now become the main focal point of our image. I mean Elgol is a beautiful place, a landscape photographer's dream. So many compositions there. Um, so I can see the photographer has used a high degree of skill here. Beautifully sharp, beautiful exposure. I just think the composition could be tweaked a little bit more. As always, if you've got any comments, then please pop them in the YouTube comment section and let's see what other people think. So our final image is obviously one taken up in the mountains and we have these beautiful crepuscular rays here coming down through the gaps in the clouds onto the hillside. We also have a lovely foreground almost framing this image of the trees. We have all these different layers of hillside here and this bit of recession going on in the background as well. As I say it's uh, a lovely image. Could it be improved? Well, we only have the rays as the single point of interest in that frame. Look what happens if we maybe change the crop. Let's go to a one-to-one, a, -one, a square crop. And let's just move that over a little bit. Does that strengthen our image? We're just looking at those rays now. I think that that does something. We can also maybe enhance those rays. If we pick up our curves adjustment layer and we go onto one of our rays and we brighten the ray and then we take a dark area alongside it and darken that. We do tend to enhance that. That's before, that's after. And we fill our mask with black. Remember from the previous session, black conceals and white reveals. So we've just hidden the results of that curves adjustment layer. We pick up a brush with white and reduce our opacity to around 10% or so. I'm just doing this really quickly. And what we can do now is just paint over some of those rays to enhance them. And so I'm going to go over the top here. 
to give you an idea and we can, if you look over on the mask you can start to see those bits of white areas which reveal our adjustment layer coming through I'm working as quickly as I can because I know this can be a bit boring for people before after just enhance those rays just a little bit and if you think they're a little bit overdone come to our opacity slider and you can just reduce the opacity of that adjustment layer and now you just get a very slight enhancement but yes a really nice image to finish on thank you so much so We've got through to the end of tonight's session. I hope that's been helpful for you. I love reading your comments on YouTube or on our Facebook group, so please keep them coming in. I said I had a bit of news about live sessions. Now, we did try a live one right back at the beginning, I think you'll remember, and we did have terrible problems with lag. I'm investing in a new computer, and once that arrives, then I'm willing to give this live session another go because I really do enjoy the interaction with our members and members have got lots of great comments to make on some of these images. So I'm going to try and sort another one out again. Um, might be just before Christmas or maybe just after. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, there's more details going to follow on our Facebook group over the next few weeks. OK, if you've enjoyed this session, and please give us a like. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to the channel to be notified of any new videos as and when we upload them. And thank you for joining us. Bye.